Hey guys, Mr. Post here, and today we'll be practicing solving projectiles that are launched at an angle. We're going to be specifically determining the horizontal displacement of these projectiles. Let's get into it, alright? A water balloon is launched from a 6.21 meter rooftop at a speed of 45.2 meters per second at an angle of 39.1 degrees. And we're going to try to determine the horizontal distance from the launch location to the landing location. The first thing that I want to do is starting to, and this problem is going to be probably to draw a picture that I already have kind of drawn for us here, and I want to start labeling this picture with the givens that we have. Now I've told you that there's a 6.21 meter rooftop, so that means it's being launched off of the ground already, and it's being launched right from here in the air. So my balloon is soaring through the sky, and it was originally launched at 39.1 degrees. I was also informed that the launch velocity was 45.2 meters per second. Now that's all we've been given, and the question is, how far this way, okay, how far down here will it land? And that's going to be my x or my total horizontal displacement. The first thing we need to do though is break up this. Break up this 45.2 meters per second into to the component velocities. Now 45.2 is not a total y velocity, it's not a total horizontal or x velocity, it is a combination of both of them. It is my resultant velocity. And the first thing we're going to use is sine and cosine to break that apart into its component velocities. All right, guys, I went ahead and solved the component velocities. The y portion, or the vertical portion of my 45.2, I use sine of 39.1 equals y over 45.2. That's my result in velocity right there. And just re algebra, rearrange this, 45.2 times sine of 39 equals y, and y was equal to, in this case, it's going upwards at an initial velocity of 28.5 meters per second. What is my initial horizontal velocity component of my 45.2 and I use the cosine of 39.1 equals x over 45.2 rearranged algebraically and solved for x to be 35.1 meters per second. Now with that said it's time for us to go ahead and label our data table. Now in the past, we've seen different data tables. This data table is going to have a portion of it that's going upwards and then outwards. And what I'm going to attempt to do is solve. All right, I'm going to solve for how high this water balloon will actually go to. That's my first part of the journey. All right, so if I'm going to draw right here, and this is my, uh, my cliff, the first part that I'm responsible for here is how high does my water balloon go. Okay, so I want to look at the amount of time that it takes to get up there. How long does that take? And I'm also concerned with the total displacement. All right, so how high above the rooftop does that balloon travel to? So I'm looking for time and displacement in my in my y axis. I'm also concerned with how far over the balloon travels during this time. So once again, I'm going to need time to find out how far horizontally the balloon travels as it reaches its maximum peak height. So that's the first half of my journey. The second half of my journey is going to be starting from right here. The same height as I last left off in the last picture and now going downward. All right. What's key for us here is how much time does this take? I need that time because the time is the bridge that's going to tell me how far over my balloon will continue to travel. So there's two journeys here. There's what I call the up and the outward and also the back down to earth and also outward as well so outward is this way downward is this way and likewise upward is this way and outward is this way too okay at this point i think it's time we start labeling our graph that we have here let's go for our up velocity i'm going back a slide the up velocity we saw was 28.5 meters per second.
And I do know that when I reach the very top, the height at which my balloon will travel, I am no longer going upwards, therefore I will have a Y, or an upwards final velocity of 0 meters per second. I am also aware that gravity is acting on this object the whole entire time, and therefore it's negative 9.8 whoa, meters per second squared. Outward, my velocity is going to be 35.1 meters per second. So we solve for right here. Outward is 35.1. And I have zero acceleration going outward. So therefore, my final velocity outward is also 35.1 meters per second. And that brings us to the next stage of using kinematic equations to solve for how high my balloon will travel, and also how long it's in the air for. And that's going to be for both of these. All right, so the question is, how high does my balloon go? And we can actually use this equation right here. We can use this equation, and we'll set it up right over here. And this has actually worked for us because we know the final velocity going upward is 0 meters per second. I remember the first velocity was going to be 28.5 meters per second. And that is going to be squared plus 2 times acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 times my displacement. And we're going to solve. We're going to solve for displacement. So let's crunch the numbers here. Okay, guys, I went ahead and I crunched the numbers. Here's the formula I use, vs squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. I substituted numbers in, as I said before, and I'm solving for my displacement. Okay, 28.5x squared gave me uh, 812.25 plus negative 19.6. A little bit of algebra, and I rearranged it, and I solve for the displacement upwards as 41.4 meters. I'm going to put that back in my table now. So my displacement upwards is 41.4 meters. Awesome. Let's find out how long it took to go to the top. Going upwards, I'm going to use this formula right here. VF equals VI plus AT. And let's just throw this right down here. That always happens to me. VI plus... Okay, let's start that over again. VF equals VI plus AT. VF going upwards is 0 the I was 28.5 plus negative 9.8 times time. Just a quick rearrangement gives me a negative 28.5 equals negative 9.8 times my time. And let's solve for this then. Time is going to be equal to negative 28.5 divided by negative 9.8 and so time will be equal to, I calculated it to be 2.91 seconds. So it takes 2.91 seconds to go upwards, 44.1 meters. 2.91. Okay, there I am. 2.91 meters to go upwards. I'm sorry, 2.91. Let's erase this here. And that also takes 2.91. 91 seconds for the balloon that's going horizontally. Now, 2.91 seconds, and the balloon is traveling at 35.1 meters per second, and I'm simply going to do velocity multiplied by time will tell me how far my balloon has traveled. So I'm going to do 35.1 times 2.91 right now, and I find out that the balloon has traveled horizontally 102.1 meters. All right, that ends the actual first part of solving the problem. First part of solving the problem is actually done now. Now we're actually going to go on to solving the second part of the problem. That's what I call the down and the out part. Okay, I'm going to start off by labeling something that I do know now. My balloon has traveled up in the air, 41.4 meters, but that was above a 6.21 meter roof. So the combined displacement upwards is going to be 6.21 plus 41.4 is going to give me 47.6. I am also aware, once again, that gravity is going to be acting on the balloon as it's cruising through the air. And it will not be acting on the balloon horizontally, though. 
Okay, I also aware that my initial velocity of my balloon, now that it is beginning to fall back down to Earth, it's going to start with a vertical or a y velocity of zero meters per second. Okay, right now, I don't know what it's going to strike the ground with. I am still aware that the balloon is traveling horizontally, still at 35.1 meters per second. I know that because there's no acceleration horizontally, so the velocity remains the same. And the question we got to find out is, how far does the balloon travel horizontally? In order to find out how far it travels horizontally, I first need to find out how long it's in the air for. And I'm going to use some of these givens over here to determine how long it's in the air for. Here we go. I could use my displacement right here equals the initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. That's definitely, we could do that easily. We know the initial velocity is zero, so zero times the time doesn't really matter. So my displacement equals one half at squared. Could we use this formula? I know the displacement, I know the initial velocity, and I could grab VF, and then I, once I grab the final velocity, then I'd be able to sub it into this equation here, and then I could actually solve for what I need, which is time. But that seems a little too complicated for me. I think we're going to stick with, in this case, this formula right here. And in case you're wondering, once again, I don't know how long it's in the air for, and I don't know the final velocity, so there are two variables that are unknown, and I can't have that in the same equation. So that leaves us with the displacement equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. And the cool thing here is that we know the displacement. The displacement going upwards was 47.61 meters. It's going to be equal to the initial velocity times time. The initial velocity we already know is zero. So zero times my time, we know the end of that story there, plus one-half, negative 9.8, times my t squared. And we are looking for t, so this is something we're going to be solving for today. All right, so I'm just going to erase this out of the equations because zero times time really ends up being zero. Okay, let's rearrange this using some algebra. Okay, guys, I've taken the liberty of cutting through a couple steps. I've solved, I've multiplied the negative 47.61 by 2. I've divided it by 9.8, and I found out that my t squared is going to equal 9.61. So at this point, I'm going to take the square root of 9.61 to find out what t is. So my time is going to be equal to, and the time is equal to 3.1 seconds. Now that kind of makes sense to me. It's a little longer than the journey that went upwards because we are adding a little bit more displacement down here too. And just a little note here, we are using a negative displacement. I know I added that in when I pressed pause before, but we are using a negative displacement. We are going downward. So 3.1 seconds is what it takes to fall back down to Earth. So over here now I have 3.1 seconds, and that's very important because I need to know that for how far I travel horizontally. Now 3.1 seconds multiplied by 35.1 meters traveled every single second is going to give me my horizontal displacement. And when I do that, I find out my horizontal displacement on the downward portion is 108.8 meters. Now the question, let's go back to the original question here. Determine the horizontal distance from the launch location to the landing location. Please check this out. In order to go upwards, and to, to the max height, I took me 102.1 meters horizontally in order to reach my max height. I've also now traveled another 108.8 meters on my downward journey. So if I go back to my initial picture here, what is the amount of displacement? Well, in order to reach my maximum height, the maximum height was 102.1. That's in order to reach the maximum height, which is right about there, we said. And then, from that point on, the journey back down to Earth, it took us another 108.8. And when I combine the two of those displacements, it will tell me the total distance from the cliff. Or the rooftop, in this case. 
And the total distance that this balloon has traveled is 210.9 meters. That is the answer to the whole entire problem. Determine the horizontal distance. The horizontal distance total is 210.9 meters. Guys, that concludes our lesson here. A lot of work was done. We completed this table. You're going to see we actually did not need to calculate the final velocity. I could have asked you for it, but the problem was simply saying how far did it travel horizontally. Okay. The cool thing about the video is that there's a little scroll bar at the bottom. You can rewind wherever you want. You can re-listen to certain parts of this, uh, this presentation, and you can also fast forward. Try the problem again on your own to see if you can redo it without me helping you. Then go back and check your answers on this screen to see if you got it right. Hey guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Best wishes.